Hi everybody, welcome to the module as a woman. As a woman going through a very long, hard or painful fertility journey, there are many given factors. And I'll share from my experience some of my givens. In my journey, there were so many unknowns. And I really didn't know what's going to happen. What treatment is, what treatment is going to work for me? And what else do I need to do to make this successful? And that's so frustrating. That's really, really frustrating. And my path was unclear. It was as if like I'm wearing glasses with Vaseline smeared on it. And no matter, no matter how hard I tried to clear the glasses, they just won't go away. And my life path was how it looked as if I am looking through a Vaseline smeared glass. And that really, really sucked my energy. My energy was very low. It was really hard. Knowing that I don't have any control over my life or my fertility journey. I was just going and going and going. Even though I was going, I was actually stuck because things were not moving. The dates were moving. There were so many failures in my past, but I was stuck with infertility. It was as if I'm stuck in a quicksand that's just sucking me down and down and down. And I was desperate to find a twig to hold on to, to climb up. And there was so much guilt. There was so much guilt. Even though they couldn't find any real problem in me, still in my mind, like, why not this is happening for me? What is wrong with me? It's like as if I had this big question mark on my head hanging over all the time. And for many of us, situational depression happens. It's not clinical depression. Situational, because of infertility. That's the situation. And if you are on your journey, you know when I say injections, that's given. There's no way without doing that. So many injections. It's not just one injection and get over it. Multiple injections in a day, and you have to be absolutely disciplined about it. Absolutely disciplined. And for me, eight years of that discipline. In the previous module, I talked a little bit about my journey. But in here, as a woman, I really wanted to take you through the different emotions that kind of showed up on my journey. To do that, I'm actually going to use this tool. It's called Journey Map. And since my journey was eight years long, I cannot do all, the, all of that in this one paper. I'm just picking up one small segment of it. And the journey, the map I'm going to pick up here, it's my first donor cycle. So this is actually my sixth IVF try. And I'm actually going to draw my journey here. And on the top, these are all the positive emotions. On the bottom, these are all my negative emotions. Actually, for this cycle, we saw a new doctor, Dr. Sherban. And he had a very good track record. And I did all my research. And I was, in fact, very, very excited for my journey. Excited to meet him for the first time, just to hear like what is different that he can offer that can help me pregnant finally. So 
you know, I'm just going to express me. I'm very excited here. You know, that's what this is all about. And when he was going through our records, even in our first meeting, he suggested like, hey, looking at your record and, you know, having gone through so many IVFs and failed, I'm actually going to recommend donor eggs. Boom. I was so disappointed in hearing that. I was really, really disappointed. This is it. My eggs are faulty. It doesn't work anymore. And there was shame. And also a lot of confusion. Because if you're using donor eggs and if you end up conceiving and if you're becoming pregnant and have a baby, that baby is not going to look like you. That baby is not going to have some of your characteristics. And that was my fear. So I was so confused. And also, around the same time, knowing that my husband's sperms are still going to be the same. They are going to use his. In fact, I really got mad at him for whatever reason. That's one of the emotions that I was going through. I was really mad at my husband, irritated and annoyed. You know, I am going through all these things in the IVF cycle, and now I have to take donor eggs. That's it. That itself is a big blow. And now, you know, we're not going to change anything for you. Nothing is different for you. And I have to really get over that fact. And then, somehow I have to make up my mind. Because, remember, I don't give up so easily. It took a while for me, and I have to do it on my own. I, do have to, I did have to make up my mind. And then I, I did say yes. I was, you know, going over here, I was a little bit skeptic. You know, it's, it's not too high of an S, it's there. And while we were going through the journey, you know, it's not just my, just my IVF cycle, life happens. And guess what? One of my close friend announced her pregnancy news. There you go, boom, came crashing down. Jealousy. Boom. Came crashing down. I was jealous. I was really jealous. It's really hard, you know, going through something very difficult like this. When your close friend is announcing that nothing in a malicious form. Nothing malicious about it. But that was really hard on me, actually. I still remember that. And then somehow I do have to cope up and get ready for my journey, becoming a little bit more positive here, optimistic. And I was actually pretty thrilled to go over donor profiles. I do have to go check out the donor profiles and select somebody who I think would be a good match for me. And I was pretty excited about it. I did choose somebody who I thought, you know, would be a good person. And, you know, I got more excited because I'm in it right now. And then, you know, procedures happen. The only thing in here I have to do is I have to just go for when they implant the embryos. So I did go for that. Um, embryos were implanted. And then after that, I went for my blood work. In the meantime, you know, again, life just doesn't stop for me. At work, I just had this mask on me all the time. There is a little bit of a shame there again. a mask on it. Nobody knew what is going on. 
I mean, even after all these tries and all these cycles and all the things that's going on for me, I was still ashamed about my infertility. There was a lot of shame. I was holding on to it. And that really distracted me at work. Even though I pretended nothing existed, like nothing at work, it's not bothering me. It still bothered me quite a bit. Because my colleagues, they had kids. You know, they, they talk about their kids sometimes. That conversation happens. And sometimes that's frustrating. In my time, you know, this time, after the process is over, I went for my blood work. In fact, this is the only time in my IVF journey I actually got a positive pregnancy result. I was positive. I was pregnant. In fact, I was actually pregnant with twins. I was super, 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 super excited. I don't even have space here in this paper. I was really excited, so thrilled. And I thought like, wow, this is it. I mean, all the disappointment, the shame, the confusion, the irritation, the skepticism, all those kind of, you know, like slowly starting to disappear, drift away. And I was extremely thrilled. This time we were very careful. I mean, we just didn't tell this news to anybody. We just wanted to make sure. And this is where the universe tested me again. After a few weeks of that positive pregnancy test, I spotted. And then I, I kind of knew in my body that something is not right. I immediately knew. And went to the doctor again and he tested and he announced that I'm slowly losing the babies. They're not going to survive and he's not hearing the heartbeats anymore. So my world came crashing down all the way to the end here. And if you, this is where I wanted to stop about this journey. If you see, there is so much of the emotional roller coaster journey it is. I'm just talking about a very small cycle amongst all the different treatments that I had. So just to put a little bit of color into this chart, I actually got this emotion sticker from Michaels or any other craft store that you can buy. So when I was excited, I'm actually going to Put the smiley sticker here. So, you know, I got these stickers at Michael's, and uh, these are emotion stickers. Just so that really I understand all the emotions that are going through. Just, you know, putting the excited sticker here. I'm really excited, I'm smiling. And then after that, when I heard, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed because, you know, I was suggested to have the donor eggs then, you know, I'm frowning. That's where the frowny sticker is going to come. And there's shame because, you know, now it's not my eggs. It's not going to be my eggs anymore. So I'm frowning and there's a lot of confusion. There's shame. And, of course, like I mentioned to you, I was totally, totally irritated and annoyed by my husband, you know, and confused here. Like, I'm like blinking, blah. Um, and slowly, I was becoming a little bit skeptic. You know, I'm not smiling, but, you know, there's a little bit of that here. So I'm going to be skeptic here. And then when my friend announced her pregnancy, you know, then I became jealous. That's what this is. And then going back to my journey, when I, you know, when I became more optimistic because now I started looking at the donor profiles, then there, there is a little bit of that smile again. You know, may not be to the greater extent, but I am smiling. And then when I picked somebody, I got really excited, so I'm all smiles here. Okay, and then 
the big shame factor came in again, right? The big shame factor, because at work, I really cannot share this. And in fact, it was so frustrating for me that I have to hear many of people's baby, sh baby stories and seeing people pregnant at work. That was really, really hard on me. But then, you know, my up was, I got pregnant with twins. Yay! There you go. I am all smiles. I am all smiles. You know, I wanted to put even one more because that's how happy I was. But then when I got, you know, when I got that taken away from me, when I lost it, you know, and I can use many of those stickers. This is how I was. So if you see, this is my journey map. This is my journey map just on my first donor cycle. The reason why I'm using these stickers is it really helps capture the emotions. Now I'm doing it after the fact, but it, now I know about my journey, but it really helps me capture how up and down, up and down my journey was. Okay? That is a long time to maintain that discipline. And there are so many ancillary things like acupuncture, yoga, diets, tea, so many things and many more actually that are advertised that are targeted towards women mostly, to be honest with you. And I've tried all of them actually in desperation. I've tried all of them. And these are some of the given factors. And like I mentioned, my journey with all these emotional roller coaster ride this ups and downs and ups and downs, just like how you saw on my journey map. Even though the journey map I drew was only for a very short duration, you saw the ups and downs, the emotional roller coaster ride. And my sucko meter, I kind of call this sucko meter, that's my suckiness level, was an all time high. It was over the roof. It was so high, I think the meter would have broken if I had like a physical meter. That's how it was for me. And again, I was lonely. I was shameful. I was fearful because time is running out on me. I was so worried. I was so desperate. Please. This is be my time. Let this be my time. And when things are not happening, I was so frustrated. I was feeling inadequate, guilty, jealousy. There are so many emotions. It was definitely a roller coaster ride for me. And it was an eventful ride. I will see you in part one workbook aspect of this chapter.